Okay. Um, my name is Avi Dezokor. Um, I'm, I'm a professor in the EECS department at um, UC Berkeley. And today what I'm going to talk about is um, fast scalable video similarity measurement and search. So before I dive into the, the talk, let me just motivate uh, and, and explain what problem we looked at. Uh, around 1999, we became interested in the problem of video search because at that time we, we felt there was a lot of text search and image search and the video search, at least in the academic community, was very much unexplored. And the problem we were interested in was the following. Suppose you have a very large database of videos and somebody comes up with a new video to you and says, is something very similar to this video in this database? Maybe reduced spatial resolution, different frame rate, maybe a different format instead of uh, Microsoft uh, um, format, maybe it's in Apple or real. Ha ha is, is something very similar to this some, in this very large database. So we were interested in developing schemes, fast similarity searches that would detect nearly identical videos in, in, in a large database. Um, and if you think about it, th there's a lot of near duplicates when it comes to text on the web. Where you do a search on a common disease, there's a piece from National Institute of Health, and that repeats itself in 500 first answers that you get out of almost any search engine. And we thought that probably the same thing could be true for video. So um, for, what do I mean by nearly identical? Let's say this is one video and, and the spatial resolution has been cut into another one. I call these two things nearly identical. If the frame rate has been changed or the bit rate has been changed or the format has been changed. Why do we care about this problem? Well, um, numerous problems. First and foremost, suppose that you're a content owner and you, wanna, you, you have not watermarked your content and without doing that, you still want to be able to detect all the, all the places your content have leaked into, legally or illegally, mostly illegally you care about. And so, the, so you're the author and, and your content in various formats is kind of all over the internet. And, and, and you have this big database and you know what your own content is and you want to say, is my content appearing somewhere on the web? You crawl the web, collect a bunch of videos and say, now, is, is this video that I generated one of these? So that's one application. Uh, another situation is better organization of the search results. As I said, when you do search, um, th there's a whole lot of results that look almost identical. So instead of cluttering the first page with things that are identical, you want to just clutter it with different things so the user can pick and choose. And then once you click that, then you realize that, okay, the different versions of that video at different spatial and temporal and bitrate resolution sitting somewhere. And the third motivation was kind of fault tolerant delivery. Uh, so suppose that you know the same video content is sitting at multiple sites on the web. Uh, can I do something? Can, if, if one website that, that has it is down, can I view the same content from a different website? So in some sense, organizing the web and figuring out where the nearly duplicate videos are sitting is an important problem, and the solution to that can be very useful. So if, if, this, if this site is, is down, you can stream it from the other side. So as I said, the, the precise problem we looked at is to design efficient algorithms that measure video similarity and performs video similarity search in large databases in a, in a fairly scalable way. And I won't go into the mathematics of it too much. This is not the right place. But just to give a hint of the basic ideas that we applied is that we started thinking about video as a bag of frame model, the same way as the document people think of text as a bag of word model. Okay? And a key requirement in, this, in, in the approach that we came up with is that we wanted our technique to work on any length video, as easily on a two-hour video as it was on a two-minute video. So we wanted whatever me methodology we came up with to, to scale to different length videos. So the basic idea is as follows. We generate a set of random seed vectors, S sub n to S sub m, uh, and, and you then go through, you generate a signature for every video. And what do I mean by a signature? You find um, the, the frame in your video sequence that comes closest to each one of these seed vectors. Okay? So, and these are represented by GX uh, S1, blah, 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 all the way to GX S sub M. So if you have M seed, seed vectors, then this is the signature of your video. This is the representation that from then on we use to do all the fast video similarity search. And, and the, the key thing here is that this representation is independent of the length of the video, and that has many consequences as far as scale is concerned. And so um, to do that, we, we have to go 
we have to come up with some sort of a feature vectors for our video. And because we're dealing with non-text and we we're looking with visual stuff, and we were with Adam and not to use metadata and really just stick to, to visual data, we use color histogram in, in the video, uh, specifically value, saturation, and hue. We quantize it, uh, make a 712 dimensional vector, and uh, uh, this is really what we use in, in building the seed vectors to do this, the searches. So um, between September of 1999 and December of 1999, we started crawling the web. We actually used the instructional machines in the basement of Corey Hall over the summer period. Actually, it, it started at the summer. It, it ended almost in August, but we had to do a little bit more from September to December as well. One of the key problems was quickly we found out most of the videos on the web at that time were porn, and a lot of the undergrads were offended by walking into the lab and seeing all these naked people on the screen. So the instructional facilities at Berkeley asked us to cover the PCs with, with blankets. So my student and I went, quickly went to, uh, I forgot, Target or something, bought a lot of blankets and covered the, the 20 or 30 PCs that were crawling. And the way we did that, essentially, we started with the dictionary, um, went over every word in the dictionary, crawled the web, and collected approximately, let's see, 40,000 video clips. Um, that, that was, um, I think, yeah, approximately, f um, I, I don't say that here, but the number of the video clips is about 45,000, somewhere in that vicinity. Uh, we, we also built the ground truth set, um, which painfully we watched in order to figure out where the similar videos are, in order to test our algorithms to have something to compare against. And we did the usual things people do, compute recall and precision and all the rest of it. Um, and, and this kind of shows the, the performance of, the, of this simple idea I just talked about. And one of the key things to, to, to note that um, this is precision versus recall, that the existing techniques, which is the iterative techniques in the literature, were O of n squared, where n is the number of videos in, the, in your large database. And our algorithm was O of n. So quite a bit of improvement right, right away. The next thing we had to do is the signature vectors we came up with were very large, 712 dimensional, and there were 100 of them. So if each video is essentially being represented by 700 times 100, that's 70,000 numbers. That's a lot. So we had to do some sort of a dimensionality reduction, and most of you think of principal component analysis as a way to do it. And it turns out, so this is referred to in the, in the technical literature as curse of dim dimensionality. So PCA in this case didn't really work by itself directly, but after some fiddling around, we came up with a two-step process, a projection vector uh, uh, to project that signature into something lower dimensional, and then the second step, apply PCA and to come up with something even lower dimensional. And the beauty of this thing was, in order to compute these things, we didn't have to do anything new because we already had computed these quantities earlier on. So now we have a compact, small signature vector that really represents each video. And this kind of shows, as a function of accuracy, the amount of pruning that we achieve using our technique, which is shown on the blue curve as compared to the other techniques. So we can prune a lot of these things. And the, essentially, we're utilizing results from fast database techniques that already existed in order to make sure that the, the similarity searches are done very fast. And finally, the last thing we did was it, it, it was not, it's, it's not a good idea to use absolute thresholds to figure out if two videos are closer. We figured it's a good idea if you have a large data set, maybe you cluster the video ahead of time so that similar videos are already in the same cluster, and that can be used um, um, more usefully in order, to recon in order to retrieve videos that are close to each other. Uh, and the use of that becomes clear in, in just a second. And we don't know the number of those clusters ahead of time, but basically you can think of a large video database, maybe a million of them, you feed it into our clustering algorithms, and out comes n clusters, and each cluster has quote unquote similar videos. So we applied that on, on our data set of 40,000 videos, and this shows the number of clusters versus the cluster size. So as you can see, uh, this, is a, this is a long tail distribution. There's a lot of uh, clusters out here, but there's few videos that have very large sizes. And you're probably wondering what was it between 96 and 90, between in the, at the end of 1999 that had those kind of things. So in total, just as a matter of statistics, the total number of clusters we came up on that 40,000 video was about 7,000, and average number of similar copies in each cluster were 2.95. So you go through this, multiply this by this, divided by 45,000, on average, 45% of the clips have at least one similar video at that time. I mean, it could be quite a different story now. 
you might we're wondering what kind of videos would, would they have been. So this table kind of shows that. Um, on, the, on the left hand side, you have the, 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 this is the set of largest clusters. So on the left, you have the size of it. So the largest cluster had 263 similar videos, and um, the location diversity put was 0.12, and the description of that was share red letter introduction, which actually I don't know what, quite what it is. The one I've seen a lot of is the dancing baby from uh, uh, Ellie McBeal. Uh, the one that we saw quite a bit of was the Clinton testimony down here. And uh, the, the red columns, so diversity means, location diversity means um, the, 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 the larger that number is, that means the more diverse web pages were those videos located at. So uh, I'm almost done. Uh, so the more diverse places those videos are located. And the, and the red stuff simply means that less than fewer than 95% or fewer videos in these clusters are truly similar. Uh, this shows the same plot with a little bit more uh, data points in it. And finally, this is a, a little demo that we came up, and it's currently sitting at the web page of my student, Samson Chung, who's teaching at the University of Kentucky. Um, I can show you the output of that. I won't show real life demo since I'm out of time. But basically, here's a user. The user would input a video query. Um, you, we've crawled the web. Um, we captured all the video. This generates all the signatures. Um, put the signatures inside the, uh, the database. And you can do similarity search on the video directly. Or if you're using a keyword, because you've done clustering ahead of time on your video sequences, you can use some of these keywords to figure out which clusters you reveal. But the clustering has been done based on visual data only. Uh, therefore, videos that didn't have any meta metadata or didn't have any keywords associated with them still get retrieved because they're simply in the same cluster as, and they're visually similar to the rest of the elements on the cluster that do have a keyword associated with them. So here's a, uh, a, a, an example. I won't, I won't show the, 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 this thing in action, but we use Clinton. Um, there's 153 uh, videos that were retrieved in 87 clusters. The average cluster size is 2.8. And, um, and, uh, and here, here's the visual um, thumbnails of those videos. Quite a bit of these things for, for some reason, but also quite a bit of Clinton's. And, uh, you, you can also go put in, um, uh, I don't know, Madeleine Albright or Gal Gore or any of the char political characters, Sandy Berger at, at those times, and retrieve quite a bit of other stuff. I'll stop right here and pass the torch on to um, Rujna for, as our next speaker. <laughs>